G'day guys, Jazz here and welcome to another video. So now I know it's been a few weeks since I've posted a video, but I've been having a bit of a hectic time. Firstly, I've moved to a new city. Secondly, I've moved into a new house. And third, I've started a new job. So all of that happening at the same time has made things, you know, pretty full on. But I have managed to get some time to make a new video. Now, one of the things I get asked the most often is usually about the pathways of practicing medicine in Australia, particularly if you've trained and completed your medical school overseas. So Australia is a great place to practice and live uh, overall. You know, firstly, we have public health care for our citizens. Secondly, the weather is great majority of the time. Unfortunately, at the moment, there's been a lot of flooding on the East Coast, which has been quite sad, but generally it's nice and sunny. And thirdly, I have to say the work conditions for doctors in the country is quite good relative to a lot of other first world countries. So firstly, the AMC or the Australian Medical Council, they are the gatekeepers into the profession for all overseas trained graduates. So the AMC has created various pathways for international medical graduates to undertake and to ensure that the level of their medical education and training from you know whichever country they come from meets the standard of general registration in Australia with the medical board. Now there are three categories that have been created. The first one is the standard pathway. Number two is the competent authority pathway. And number three is the specialist pathway. Now I'll go through into all of these three pathways in a second, but firstly, before, regardless of whatever pathway you're gonna go down, the first thing you need to do is get your medical degree verified. Go to the AMC website. I'll provide the link in the uh, section down below. But they have a database or a list of essentially all medical schools which they feel, or the Australian Medical Council feels are at, uh, at appropriate level uh, in order to practice medicine in Australia. So check the website, check, go under your country, wherever you're watching this from, and then check in the list and ensure that your medical school is on that list. Once that's all good, then what you have to do is get your diploma verified. Now, the AMC, amongst a bunch of other organizations around the world, you use a company or a platform called EPIC, which is run by the Educational Commission for Foreign Medical Graduates, and that's based out of the United States. So what they'll do is they'll verify your diploma with the university that provided it to you, essentially by calling them up, sending them some paperwork, and then, you know, once that's all validated and the university says, yes, this person was a student here, then they'll sign it off, and then essentially it'll go back to Epic. And then what they'll do is they'll provide a written report and then they'll forward that on to the AMC. Now, this process itself, it depends on your university or where you went to medical school, but it can take up to a month or so. It really comes down to how responsive your medical school is. Now, I underwent this process just to get my medical degree verified when I applied for my uh, GMC registration for the UK, and that took about a month. And I think that was probably pretty quick. I have heard a few friends that it's taken quite a while longer. So get onto it as soon as possible just to get that step ticked off. Okay, so once that's all sorted, what you need to do is work out what category do you fall into out of the three that I mentioned before. So the majority of candidates will fall into category one, which is the standard pathway. Now the steps for this process, like I said, just before you get your medical degree verified, then after that, you need to complete the AMC CAT MCQ examination, which is a three and a half hour computer-based multiple choice examination, which focuses on essential medical knowledge, involving understanding disease processes, clinical examination and diagnosis, investigations, therapy and management. So then once you've completed that uh, and passed that examination, you're eligible to sit the clinical examination. Now this clinical examination comprises of 16 assessed stations and there are four rest stations. So then the candidates will rotate through a variety of stations and will undertake various clinical tasks such as history taking, physical examinations, diagnosis formulation and management and counselling. So then if you manage to pass that examination as well, so you've ticked off, getting your degree verified, you've passed the MCQ examination and then you've also passed the clinical examination, then basically what you can do is apply for provisional registration with the Medical Board of Australia, which then involves undertaking 12 months of a supervised medical practice in a you know hospital or supervised facility. And then once you complete that and you pass all the assessments during that year, which are the same as what every other junior doctor will undertake, but like as interns do, 
And then once that's all signed up, you'll be eligible to get your general registration. Now, the second category is the competent authority pathway. Now, this pathway is for international medical graduates who could be specialists or non-specialists from overseas and are seeking, you know, general or non-specialist registration with the Medical Board of Australia. Now, how this pathway works, essentially the Medical Board of Australia has approved a number of international authorities as competent to assess applied medical knowledge and basic clinical skills. Now, I'll run through a quick list of the approved authorities. So number one is the GMC or the General Medical Council in the United Kingdom. Next one is the Medical Council of Canada. Next one is the United States or the USMLE. Then we have the Medical Council of New Zealand, Medical Council of Ireland, and then the last one's also the National Board of Osteopathic Medical Examiners, which is also based in the United States. Now, candidates who have a medical degree that's been recognized by the Australian Medical Council from that list that I was mentioning before, and are also registered with any of the bodies that I just mentioned or in the list on the screen, are eligible to apply for provisional registration or supervised registration without having to sit any of the actual AMC exams. So then if you're approved through that pathway, then you complete 12 months of provisional or supervised registration and practice and then you can apply for your general registration. Now the last pathway or the third pathway is the specialist pathway. That's a lot of pathways. Now this pathway is for international medical graduates who fall into any of the following categories. So firstly, you're an overseas trained specialist and you're applying for assessment of comparability to that of that same specialist training program in Australia. The second category is overseas trained specialists applying for an area of need specialist position in Australia. And the third category are for overseas trained specialists wishing to undertake a short period of specialist or advanced training in Australia. Now, international medical graduates who ha also have degrees that are recognized, medical degrees that is, that are recognized by the AMC and have also completed their specialist training in whatever field it is overseas, can apply for assessment under this pathway. Now, an internationally qualified specialist or a specialist in training, aka a registrar, can undertake short-term training in Australia without having to obtain an AMC certificate. Or if they want to undertake the specialist examinations based in Australia to gain specialist recognition or registration that way. So that is, say you're a radiologist that's based in say the United Kingdom and you want to come to Australia, you can apply for a role, say as a, you know, as a provisional fellow at one of the hospitals in Australia, but in that time, so you don't have to get the AMC certificate for that, but you do have to be working there with the aim to pass the fellowship examinations for the Royal Australian College of Radiology and or while you're trying to pass those exams so that's it guys i hope you found the video useful if you do have any questions please do comment down below subscribe to the channel if you're new and i'll catch you in the next one cheers